I was simply watching television one day and I saw the BB special on reincarnation and it was very accidental and uh, Ian Stevenson was standing there talking quietly about case studies he had uh, conducted over a 15 or 20 year period and they showed on the television the book 20 cases suggestive of reincarnation I thought that might be very interesting so I went out and bought the book and I started reading the book and uh, one of the things you'll find that when you read the case studies rather than talk about what, them, what they are without reading them closely there's a kind of force to the case studies that is really enticing uh, enthralling. And uh, what I did is I read them all the way through and I, I put down the book and I said, well now this must be wrong. And uh, here, are, and I started reading, so I began reading it and the more I read the more I realized that um, this was important uh, and it was good research, empirical research, and that it rendered it a scientific question and that I couldn't think of any alternative explanation as plausible for the data as that some people reincarnate. As a matter of fact, some people have said after reading the data in the past 10 years, why uh, some people have said, look, um, maybe it's not unreasonable to believe that some people reincarnate. And Stevenson says that. It's certainly not unreasonable to believe because this is the best fit on the data. My, my reaction is stronger. Um, my claim was that, in the book, that it's irrational to disbelieve it. And a lot of people thought that well over the top. That was too strong a claim. I meant it in a very simple way, that if you have a very commanding argument that you can't refute, not to accept the argument is to act irrationally. That's what I'm saying, that there's a very strong argument here that has not been refuted and cannot be refuted uh, by my lights. Not cannot, but has not been refuted. And it's irrational not to accept it. And the conclusion of that is some people reincarnate, meaning, by implication, that human beings are more than their bodies, that human personality in the end is not reducible to a statement about biochemical states, brain states, biological properties produced by brain states, or anything like that. Well, what follows is that uh, human personality, uh, as we know it, cannot be adequately understood in terms of classical standard psychology, which works on a purely materialistic basis. In other words, to explain human behavior, why people do what they do, on a purely materialistic model, which we typically do, will leave important things out. Because if human beings are more than their bodies, and their minds are causally relevant in producing their behaviors, and the minds are not simply brains, then to explain the behavior you have to appeal to causes that are quite unlike anything people in standard psychology talk about. So one of the implications of this would be that there's something wrong with psychology as we know it on a purely physicalistic model, that it will not be able to succeed in explaining these kinds of cases and probably not a number of others. So in other words, if this data is acceptable, it shows that our way of explaining human behavior has to break out of the existing paradigm. It also suggests that there's some incredible mysteries here about human nature that we can't begin to fathom. Stevenson is the primary prime mover of the uh, data because uh, he's made it a, um, uh, a research project for 30 or 40 years of examining children and seeing whether their claims to have relived, uh, be reliving, to have reincarnated are actually substantial. Um, his work is revolutionary in that he's the first one to take children seriously, uh, asking, you know, what would it take to show that what they're saying is true. And his work is uh, revolutionary in that without being overly aggressive about it, he takes each alternative explanation of the cases that are strong and shows why they, um, why they don't seem to work very well. Uh, as for his integrity, um, he doesn't push the view on anybody, and as, near, as some people have said that, but he doesn't push the view on anybody, and um, I think he's uh, incapable of the kind of lie, distortion, or manipulation of the data 
that others would uh, submit to because I think he's more interested in really finding out what it is and he's careful enough to say that certain cases are bad cases, they're frauds and so on. So he's, I find him a person of great integrity. Somebody said, well look, you know, why even get involved in this because 80% of it's fraud. And I believe that may be, uh, that, that may be true, that may be true, 80% of it may be fraud. But, uh, but the important point is that if 100 people jump off the Empire State Building and 95 of them land just as you expect they would, painfully and disastrously, and five, but five land gently and walk away, what do you think needs to be explained? The five that landed gently and walked away, they're statistically deviant. So some people will say in statistics, you don't have to explain any of this data because it's so infrequent and it's statistically deviant and in most cases like this will turn out to be frauds. But when you took, take the clear cases and the hard cases, you can't explain those away by saying they're like the other ones because you take them because they're very much unlike the other ones that were wrong. You know? So that sort of stuff. So, I mean, and there will be other objections too. I've heard people say reincarnation couldn't occur because we don't know how it could occur. We don't know how. As scientists, we don't know what the mechanism is. We don't know how it, it couldn't have a mechanism that we could examine. So we can't know that it occurs. It's a, it, that, as objections go, that, that certainly leaves a good deal to be desired because you may not know how something occurs but have plenty of evidence that it occurs. I don't know how Slewfoot won the fifth race at Hialeah, but I can know that he did very easily. I don't know how you got into this room, but I know that you're here, that sort of story. So you don't have to know why things end up the way they are. Although in mature science, all our explanations will be causal. But there are kinds of explanations of events that are not causal, but they're purely statistical. You know that something's occurring, but you don't know why.